In May of 2011, more than 38,000 fish died over the course of a few days on the Ogeechee River near Sylvania, Georgia. It was the biggest fish kill in the state's history and set in motion a series of events that included a thorough investigation as to its cause and consequences. How do you get to the bottom of a catastrophe like this? If you're sitting in a chemistry classroom, the answer might be closer than you think. Welcome to Chemistry Matters. A lot of students, and maybe you're one of them, think chemistry is just one more science class they have to take in order to graduate. And it might be, but what you might not realize is that chemicals impact our lives in countless ways. From manufacturing, to agriculture, to healthcare, to space exploration. Chemistry is used to build smartphones and to make fuel for race cars and rockets. We can combine molecules to develop new medicines and build prosthetic limbs. The chemistry of basketball shoes helps us jump higher. Chemicals in armored vests can protect us. We can prevent food from spoiling and even make soft drinks taste better. We can figure out how old dinosaurs are, invent new materials for furniture and houses, or for packages and toys. And then we can use chemistry to figure out how to recycle those materials. We can stay safe and warm and dry, smell really good, create jewelry, and keep ourselves clean, all with chemistry. Countless discoveries led to a lot of the products I just mentioned, and the truth is that some of those discoveries were made by accident, but most were the result of careful research using a logical approach to solving a problem. Scientists use a variety of methods called science and engineering practices to investigate the world and solve problems. Those include asking questions and defining problems, developing models, planning and carrying out investigations, analyzing and interpreting data, using mathematics and computational thinking, constructing explanations and designing solutions, engaging in argument from evidence, and obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. In this chemistry course, you'll learn how to use these practices to figure out how matter throughout the universe reacts and interacts to form new matter, and a whole lot more. For now, let's get back to the Ogeechee River, using both chemistry and the science and engineering practices I just mentioned to figure out what happened, and maybe even to help suggest ways to prevent similar incidents from happening again. And you'll see an icon like this, and hear a sound like this, to draw attention when science and engineering practices come into play. By the way, those places might also indicate a good time to have something to write on, for your notes, or sometimes for other tasks. The Ogeechee is a typical river in rural Georgia. Like many rivers, it's been used for everything from recreational purposes to irrigating the region's agriculture. But in May of 2011, when more than 38,000 fish died in the river, all within a roughly 120-kilometer area, along with turtles, crayfish, alligators, and other wildlife, something had obviously changed. Today, you'll be an employee of the State Department of Natural Resources, and it's your job to figure out why this happened, along with suggesting ways to prevent something like this from happening again. How could you use chemistry to solve this challenge? Good question. We'll talk about that some more today. Okay, thank you. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by talking about what we already know and what we want to find out. This means figuring out what we know about rivers, about wildlife, about what could have killed the fish, stuff like that. This is the first science and engineering practice, asking questions and defining problems. This is where scientists use their senses and sometimes instruments to make qualitative and quantitative observations. Qualitative observations are characteristics of a substance, like it's cold or blue or tall. Quantitative observations use measurements. So the cold, blue, tall object might have a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, reflect light with a wavelength of 460 nanometers, and is two meters in height. Scientists analyze their observations and organize them to look for patterns and relationships, which usually leads to questions. So this is a good time to write down three questions, asking what might have caused the fish to die. We'll take a quick break from this first video on our playlist 
to give you time to come up with your three questions. After you've written down your own questions, share and discuss them with a partner if you've got one. Then choose the top three questions designed to figure out what happened to the fish. When you're done, move on to the next video on the playlist. We'll be ready when you are.